<laughs> and then we'll circle well, back. I brought, I brought multiple, multiple change of venues. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because Paris is for royalty, and then it made, <laughs> made me think of um, Coco Chanel. So I've got my fur. Cap, Coco and I'm ready. I'm ready for oh, spring. I like that. So I had to do this. My couture spring hat. Oh my! You 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 might want to gather all your fashion accessories and do a little show for us after Maria's finished, so that Kelly. Right. Can you really <laughs> take your thought process into consideration? Hi, Kelly. I'm so excited for her. Kelly's here. Kelly, we're, we're excited for you, Kelly. Thanks, everybody. I'm excited to see what Nuria has cooked up for us today. I always look forward to her trips of places I've never been. <laughs> Never been to Paris, so we need to fix that. I know, that sounds like a perfect honeymoon to me. Doesn't it? Oh my gosh. You and Jess taking the city of light by storm. Bien sûr. Oh my. Oh, and Lori has the dog today. I've decided the dog goes back and forth between. Oh yes, he does. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And he, actually, he has on his very sparkly, I don't know if you can see it. Okay. <laughs> What's his name? Hey, who? Hey, B Boo. B O O. Hey, Boo. Yeah, hey, hi, buddy. He looks thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> we have so many new and old friends. This is amazing. I'm so excited. Yes, Nora, do you want to have a shout out opportunity to say hi to people that you know that are here for you that we don't know? And then you can tell them how they need to come back every week. Well, <laughs> yes, every, everybody needs to come back every week. But, you know, I want to do a shout out to uh, my dear friend and former colleague, uh, Tanya Harud, who's uh, connecting from Vancouver. Tanya and I used to work together along with Wendy. Uh, so, uh, and Esther, so, so happy. Hi, um, Thanks for having me. Uh, I want to do a shout out to my dear friend, Crystal, uh, who is calling in from Boston. Crystal, hello. hello. We, we, uh, we meet both as well. in Boston. And my dear friend, Amber, also, this is her first um, time joining us, and she's here in Atlanta. Great. Hi, Amber. Bonjour. Hi. Thank Bonjour. you. Bonjour. <laughs> Uh, and I'm trying that we have a lot of people, so I'm trying to go and I can't see. Uh, <laughs> okay, we're, we're not kind of like pressure on you. Go through, no, 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 through the names. I haven't seen Tony Nunn in these calls for a while. Um, so super happy to Hi, see Nora. her. Hello, everybody. Hi. Oh, hey, Tony. Hi. Hi, Hi Tony. Just I'm sorry, I, have my, I don't have my picture up, but uh, hello, everyone. Next time I'll wear my hat. <laughs> Yes, accessories are always appreciated, not required though. So welcome. Yeah. And I also see, I think Rezi, Rezi is the first time that she's joining us and she's uh, joining from uh, Texas. Hi, Rezi. Hi. Rezi. hi. <laughs> well, say hi so we can wave at you. Hi, welcome. <laughs> so yeah, lots of new and old friends and for them, so for some of them is the first time and Carol, uh, Carol, tell us, tell us what you do <laughs> well, for, for our new friends. I'm going to let Whitney start and then I'll tell you what we do. But I, I want to uh, reiterate what Noria said. We're so grateful to have all of you new, happy, smiling, lovely faces and members of the Noria Candel fan club of which we are charter members. <laughs> So um, I think you're up for a real adventure. It would be just a delightful and fantastic insider's look at luxury Paris. So without any further ado, I would love for Whitney, my partner, uh, to welcome everybody and set the uh, guidelines for participation today. So Whitney, take it away. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. And uh, we, we are really happy that you're here with us. We do this each week, each Wednesday at um, around four o'clock uh, Eastern time. And we just love, love to do these. We have fun. Uh, it's always um, informative. We always kind of laugh like, you know, 
come for the laughter, but you know, stay for the information. It's it's um, our partners in this, starting with Nuria, are just fantastic. We have a lot of fun every Wednesday. And so the first thing we do is we just say hello. And since we have a theme, we ask you if you have dressed in theme and you want to be considered for um, the prize that we give out each week from Miss Kelly McAllister with Maui Jim, then we just open this up to, um, to say hello, introduce yourself, tell us what you're wearing, tell us where you are. And, um, and then after that, we'll get into the presentation uh, and while we're doing the presentation, we just ask that you keep yourself muted because we are recording this and it lives on our um, website in perpetuity. And then uh, just be sure to put any kind of questions or comments in the chat box and I'll be the moderator at the end and I'll make sure that Nuria answers all of your questions. All right, so we'll go ahead and open this up. If you wanna be considered for the uh, Maui Gym prize, then tell us where you are, what you're wearing, and um, <laughs> you should say, who are you wearing? Today? That's right. Who are you wearing? That's right. <laughs> uh, we just want, we want to give everyone a chance to have a, a little bit of attention. So if um, uh, our partner, Kelly McAllister with Maui Jim has very generously supported this series of events by offering a pair of sunglasses every week to the people, to the person that she, the judge and jury feel have gone all into this presentation. She'll chat with us privately with Noria, no doubt. Um, so if you'd like to be considered for that award, please do introduce yourself. Tell us a little story about how you prepared today. Bonjour, je suis Joshua Edmond-Marr. Je suis un artiste Edmond-Marr above a beautiful Maurice. Good day, everyone. <laughs> Even the accent, Josh, that's very well. Oh, oui, oui, très bien. <laughs> Bonjour, je m'appelle Basha. Basha, and she speaks French. Okay, there's extra. Oh, oui, un petit peu. Oh, me too. I'm from Canada originally, so we do, we did speak a lot of French there. And um, I grew this mustache just for the occasion, took a little while, um, but it looks like you're going to audition for the cast of Ratatouille. I think there's uh -huh. a good show. Coming. I love it. Yeah, that'd be a good one, Ratatouille. I have a little apron on um, from, from Italy, but it has some Paris and other themed stuff on here. And my hat is um, close to a beret. Believe it or not, this, we went to, my husband and I went to university in Canada, Queens, and these are our hats that you get during um, um, orientation week. Every discipline has a hat. Um, I, w I originally started as an occupational therapy. So your pom-pom tells you which direction you're going in. Um, a bit of French because it's in uh, the Ottawa area. So a little bit of a, a little bit of a get up. I didn't want to draw my mustache on just to be careful. So um, <laughs> So that's a mail order mustache, is it? It is. <laughs> well, it's working for you. Thank you for having us. I'm excited. Au revoir. Uh oh, au revoir. Fantastic. Merci. Who else? Bonjour. 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 Oh. Bonjour. I was going to, to read all of this in French, but <laughs> I didn't know if you would understand. <laughs> anyway, my backdrop. Oh, wow. Papers. Funny Girl, the movie. Yeah. Funny story, funny story. I'm a Barbie collector and the first Barbie convention I ever attended was in 2008. And the theme was, uh, what was it? Uh, Barbie on the runway. So it all had to do with fashion. So a lot of it focused around the movie Funny Face because Audrey Hepburn once wore so many different lovely fashions. The last night of the convention, they give out the convention doll, which nobody has any idea what she's wearing until that final night when everyone gets their box and opens it and surprise. Well, I had no idea, but I was wearing the outfit. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody just screamed and said, you knew, you knew. And I said, I didn't have a clue. <laughs> Is <laughs> so that you in the background up there with your red strapless gown on? Yes. That's awesome. Lord. So that's me. That's me on the, the, the fat oh. one is me. 
<laughs> and the third one is Audrey. And then, you know, then I, I have some clips. To Audrey, Lori, don't feel bad. <laughs> and then I have some clips from uh, the movie. So I'm wearing her hat and this, let me get over there, in there, that one there. And then of yeah. course I have the balloons. That's fantastic. And your eye makeup looks fantastic too. This, you really I know. Day, so. <laughs> well done. You had me fooled. I didn't recognize you. And this is my uh, French English dictionary from high school. So it's 40 something years old. So. I have the same one. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you guys are doing great. See, Noria, how inspiring you are. All, All right, right, this is Carol. Oh, hey, Carol. What's hey. Up? So I actually, Nuria and Kelly, I am actually working today. I am a um, calculatingly casual American meeting planner in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> I have my trench coat, my scarf, my pearls. But I had to wear these terrible sunglasses. I don't <laughs> even know what make they are because my Maui gems. Uh-oh. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Kelly, just just letting you see those. And, um, and, and I, I'm a little bit, I mean, I do have a French twist also in the back. It took a while, but you know, when you're busy all day doing meetings, it just kind of gets in disarray. But I stopped for a glass of champagne. Sure. And I also, and I am in the Sierra Trudeau candle sh shop, better known as my sunroom, because I, because I collect all of these candles. And the one burning right now in my office is the Ernesto, if anybody's ever smelled that one. And who it's, makes these candles? I want some, they're beautiful. Yeah. They're Sierra Trudon. And it's, I think they were the very first candle makers in the world and they're in Paris. Okay. And um, my son gets these for me for my birthday and Christmas. But this one, Ernesto, it's so strange. It's my favorite one. And it's supposed to smell like the um, Cuban revolution. <laughs> And all. Like the dill and all of that. It does not, it's tobacco. It smells like tobacco, but you know, you think that that would smell differently. But if you ever want to try one, it's called the Ernesto. It's fabulous. So can I am have, all in. Company in the uh, chat box, please. A couple of people wanted, including myself, Carol. I Would will. So, so if I'm in disarray, I'm just exhausted from my whole day planning in Paris. Got it. <laughs> You look like you're chilling with a beautiful candle collection there. They're giant. They look giant. I'm sure they're not giant. But. They're not giant. No. And this one right here is a small one. Okay. So you can see Idea. the difference. I will. Okay. Right. I'll go next. I, okay. I, brought, I have all of my um, boxes that I've saved over the years from Chanel. And, and I have my Chanel sign. Uh, Paris is also about whimsy. So I have a little whimsy. Oh that I've, I've had for a long time. Um, have my little Chanel purse. Oh, that's a purse? purse. Oh, oh, how cool. That's darn then, it. You know, Paris got whimsy in color, so I have the little flashy purse here. And like I said, you know, you, you come to uh, Paris for the, the fashion show, so you always get dressed up and have your fashionable pieces no matter where you go if you're going to a special show or if you want to represent Coco Chanel whose favorite line was no it's not Coco Chanel's favorite line it's from Steel Magnolias and I've said it before but what separates us from the animals is our ability to accessorize and Paris is that's what Paris means to me. <laughs> I'm pretty convinced that y'all don't ever throw, none of you throw ever throw anything away. You've got <laughs> stuff you had in high school. Yes. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll go next. I don't think Kelly was on. Sam, Sam I brought my bike in um, so I could carry my baguettes. I'll be snacking on baguettes and have fresh flowers. Um, Cause I remember being in Paris and buying a baguette and it's literally like a meal there. I remember bringing one home to my pet sitter also that I bought the morning I left. <laughs> Keep so my bike is here. My bike is a 1964 Schwinn Collegiate named Old Blue. So you named your bike? <laughs> Antique. <laughs> You've had it since high school, I know. Have we already <laughs> <laughs> no, I bought it. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> Can you Hi, it's Angel. I'll go next. Okay, go. Um, okay, so I'm I'm slightly obsessed with uh, with Paris and France in general. So this is I just went around. First of all, this is a hat that I wore to dinner on Blanc. If you've never heard of that event, it started in Paris and Google it because it's all around the world now. Um, I'm wearing a Chanel scarf. I'm wearing this reminds this shirt reminds me of American in Paris with uh, Jean Kelly. And then I just went went around my house and gathered everything that I have Paris related. So that's the this whole is a, that is the whole point. This is a, a handbag that I bought at a vintage store in Paris. Um, just some miscellaneous decor. Here's some uh, Chanel shoes that I bought in Paris. Paris is always a good idea. Um, mm -hmm. I have this in my office, this map, so I can look at Paris every day. Um, a snow globe that we did for an incentive event that we did in Paris. Um, several books. This one is on Coco Chanel. This is just a journal with um, her great saying on it. Um, this is a vintage bottle that I bought at an antique store. Chambord, of course. Um, this is a beautiful vintage picture book that I found in an antique store. Um, let's see, this is a bag that I bought at the um, Musée d'Orsay in Paris. Another little trinket and I found these beautiful bookends that I use for bookends at uh, Hobby Lobby. <laughs> wow. um, this is just all I could gather in like 10 minutes. There's more, believe it or not. <laughs> that is a treasure trove of goodies right there. My God. Yes, it is. So um, yeah, I'm slightly obsessed with Paris. Always have been. It's my favorite city in the world. And I've actually been to, um, to the hotel and it is unbelievable. Unbelievable. We did a site visit there. That's gorgeous. Well, save that hat. I think. Oh yeah, isn't that fabulous? Can you really? You probably can't even really. I mean, it's big. <laughs> I was knocking people left and right because it's so big. It's, <laughs> you can still see your eyes. It's that's pretty fabulous. You are going to have a challenge today. Who else? No to? kidding. Yeah, there she is. Bonjour. Hello, bonjour, Lori. Bonjour. I'm here with my little French doggy, and we <laughs> just went. Doggy? Or did you yeah. just speak in French for the day? <laughs> and we picked up some flowers and I stole Randy's cap so <laughs> I could have something to wear. Anyway, au revoir. Beautiful as usual. Every week, every week you look great. Where's Randy? Did you hide him in the kitchen? Is he very centered? No. <laughs> I guess without his cap, he couldn't. I guess not. Yeah, well, you, took, you took his main prop, so you know. <laughs> He's not, he's got nothing left. He's stripped his charm because you have the dog. I have the dog. <laughs> okay, anybody else want to go? No, we've quieted Hello? now, huh? Okay. I've always wanted to have a French bakery in the she, South. Yes. So I have- really, uh, Oh my God, are all of those pedophores real? No, but- <laughs> <laughs> I was on my way to your house. <laughs> yes, yes. I'll fix them for you. I've got Raynol French Limoges monogrammed china. My Baccarat so, uh, crystal. My Eiffel Tower. My little Kimberly's. <laughs> you made your <laughs> and my latest books. Polish Your Poise by Madame Chic. Love it. I need a They're copy. really Super fun cute. books. So that's it. I, well, oh. I wonder what happened to you, Kimberly. Oh, and you're Evian. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you always have such an assortment of props, but you're the only person I know that would have fake pastries. I don't know. Go swap those things in. <laughs> I used to have a gift shop. So that's oh. explains so much about you. Yeah. Uh, Talk about okay. manifesting your dream. One more thing. I've got a bottle of French wine to share with everyone. That girl, boss. Yeah. Are you sharing it with us? Okay. Not Not here. For you. <laughs> I, I'm wearing 
I'm wearing yeah. I'm wearing the scent of Eiffel Chanel <laughs> that my wife just kissed me with. So that's you can't oh. that's what I'm wearing it. <laughs> that's great. And you've changed venues. You've gone and said, is that you over your shoulder? Tell us about that event. Uh, that was uh, at Heike's Hotel. Last, uh, we did about 180 people in that room. And it was at the end of the Tour de France. We happened to catch it. And we were all leaning out the window when they rode through Paris. And uh, that was the gala awards night. Uh, that's the room uh, of the, the awards night. So yes, and what hotel was that? Just whisper it. Uh, the Westin. Right next to Paris. Who right cares next. what hotel was that? Who no, cares? It was, it was right next to the Marie, which was is a nicer hotel. I'm just kidding. I'm teasing. Um, if everybody has gone, I think that we need to get started just because my presentation today is a little bit over our usual 30 minutes, only because I had a lot to present. So no is doubt. there anybody else that we need to look at? Because I don't want to, um, I want to make sure that... I deflected to Whitney, um, and I do want to announce our first five, if that's okay. Perfect. Uh, uh, so thank you very much, Noria. And I'd also like to assure you that we don't care how long you go on. Okay. Uh, I don't think you're going to lose anybody. And we have, we've been known, the, the international presentations have almost always gone long, so don't worry about that. Um, I, for those of you who don't know us, I'm Carol Owen, and I founded Retreats Resources about 15 years ago. And these weekly events, episodes of our real-time retreat series were actually inspired by Miss Noria Kandel, who right after COVID hit and we all thought we were going to have to lock ourselves in our houses indefinitely, suggested that we give uh, an opportunity for some of our partners to actually present their information uh, over Zoom. So we got ourselves up to speed with Zoom. Uh, Whitney, who is an inc incredible brander, developed our real-time retreats theme and logo. And my take on that was we'll do it, but only if they can be fun and engaging. And if we can find a way to really have some laughs together, um, have some cocktails or have some food and just share a travel experience as much as we can with this platform. So they have taken on a life of their own, but after 40 weeks in a row, Nuria continues to be the queen of our presentations. And you all are about to understand why she is just she just takes you there. And I'm sure that we are all ready to be transported to Paris today. So um, I wanted to also point out that one of the things we do every week is we award a gift from our host to the first five people who log in after 3.55 every week. And that gift uh, is from Noria. Uh, she will be sending you some French surprise, I'm not sure what, but Noria, I'll send you the home addresses tomorrow. Those five people are Mary Hogue, if she's with us still, Josh Brown, congratulations, Josh. Sam Bixby, yay, Sam. Um, Nicole Luvio with the floating Red Bull Beret and Kim Sobransky. So those five people will be getting a gift from you. Wonderful. So without any further ado, please take it away. I also wanted to stop and recognize that your colleagues, Wendy Gelati are with you today, as well as Esther calling in from Canada and Joanna. I hope she's still with us because she's actually in Paris and it's very late in the evening in Paris. So thank you very much. There she is. Bonjour. Bonsoir. 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 All right, Linda, take it away. All right, wonderful. So thank you for this amazing introduction, Carol. Hopefully I will not let anybody down <laughs> today with this presentation. I did have a really, I had a really hard time because I could talk about Paris for probably a week. So I think that in a week instead of like a day. Uh, but uh, I'm, you know, I'm very, uh, uh, I understand that everybody has things to do and I don't want to take up too much time. So if you have to leave and I'm not finished, I will be totally fine. I uh, just want to be respectful of everybody's time. And thank you, Carol and Whitney, as always, for, for organizing this for, for, ours, uh, for us. And, and especially thank you, Joanna, for joining us from Paris. It's 10 o'clock at night. And, uh, and Joanna takes care of the um, North American market. So whenever you travel to Paris, um, to either Hotel de Plaza, Athenay, or Le Maris, uh, she would be taking care of you. So I'm just about to um, share my screen with you. Um, just one second, do, do, do. one moment, hold on, and I'm going to switch this around here. Sorry, for some reason this thing. Mm -mm -mm. One second. So I can switch. Of 
course, we tested this three times before you all got in <laughs> and it worked. Why can I not? Sorry, I'm just trying to flip my screen. Just one second. There you go. All right, perfect. So you should be seeing just my main screen at this time, correct? Yes, that's what we see. Wonderful, perfect. So, oh, my friends, bonsoir, bonjour. This is how I feel, I don't know about you. It's been like 84 years or longer. That's that's how I feel since the last time that I traveled. Uh, I, I am so ready to get on a plane. I am so ready to go somewhere. And I hope that today with this, uh, you know, this half an hour, 40 minutes that uh, you're giving me uh, so generously, I hope that I'm going to be able to transport you. I'm so ready to go that I am that girl on the top of that plane is just get me on a plane, get me over to Paris, to the City of Light so that we can have a wonderful, wonderful time. Um, the cool thing about uh, virtual, uh, this virtual environment is that we can dream really, really, really big, right? And I dream super big. So I always say that, darlings, if you have to travel, travel in style. Uh, so I'm sending all of you, I'm sending this vintage uh, Peugeot to pick you up at your home and to take you to the airport. And I don't know if they made it to the call or not, but this is my friend Jessica and her daughter Sloan who turns 13 on uh, February 8th. And she was supposed to be spending her birthday in Paris, uh, but obviously uh, for obvious reasons, they cannot travel. So um, Sloan, this will help you um, dream a little bit. Uh, and I'm taking you, you with me on this trip. Uh, of course, you know that we do things big, so we're gonna fly on business class, uh, or actually in uh, first class La Premiere. Uh, we do things uh, with style at Dorchester Collection. And as we land the following day, uh, we're gonna head to the Hotel Plaza Athene, the Hotel of Fashion. Uh, it is situated in Avenue Montagne in what it's known as the Golden Triangle before the Arc de Triomphe and the Eiffel Tower. And as we arrive, we're gonna have the super famous and iconics, uh, red awnings and red gerani geraniums uh, welcoming us along with uh, two very important people in our property. We have Francois de la Haye, who is not only the general manager of the Plaza Athene, but he's also the COO of Dorchester Collection and our deputy general manager, Laurence Bloch, who just last week uh, got the medal of the Legion of Honor of France. So we are super honored and excited uh, to, to have her receive this incredible award and very honored to work for a company that recognizes women in the workplace uh, and elevates us and uh, supports us so much. Along with them, of course, the beautiful Joanna is gonna be waiting for you with open arms and uh, ready to welcome you. So as we stop into the lobby, I just wanna uh, tell you something, keep your eyes peeled because we are, we are arriving of course in the middle of fashion week because that's how we roll, right? We're gonna travel to Paris, it's gonna be fashion week. A lot of things happen around this lobby. So just um, pay attention because you never know what's gonna happen or who you're gonna see. Um, as we head over to our suites, you know me, I don't like to push too many things and stress anybody. So we're going to have a little rest. Maybe you take a nap, freshen up. Perhaps you would like to have a glass of champagne and start uh, things the right way, a little chocolate or fruit, or perhaps that beautiful sugar uh, retreats resources amenity that our pastry team has prepared for us. I'm going to see you in a couple of hours in the lobby, wow. and then we're going to go uh, for a nice little activity. So hello, everybody. I hope that you had a wonderful rest. As I mentioned, we are in during Fashion Week in Paris, and I love all these little um, details that you see throughout the property, like, for example, in the lobby, we have now this exhibition and these floral arrangements on the mannequins, mannequins along with this catwalk. And as we go out, oh, what, where, who are we seeing here? Oh, 
Sarah Jessica Parker. Oh my goodness. The one and only Carrie Bradshaw. She's just walking through the lobby as we walk out. Amazing. And as we go out, who do we have here? Of course, our fabulous, wonderful Carol and her friend Molly, who will not miss one opportunity of taking a picture as they should. So the first activity that I have for you is that we're gonna go to the Yacht de Paris and we are going to embark in this beautiful yacht. We're gonna have a tour of the Seine River. Uh, we're gonna have uh, some champagne, of course, uh, some appetizers and hors d'oeuvres as a light lunch. As we navigate the beautiful river, we can take pictures and just feel like tourists in Paris because what is, you know, what is Paris without selfies and pictures and feeling like a tourist? I love it. As we go back uh, to the hotel, um, you can freshen up, relax, and we're gonna meet in the lobby at six o'clock for a side visit, and we're gonna have dinner outside. So make sure that you're dressed with comfortable shoes because we will walk, walk to dinner, but it's only a 10 minute walk. So we're gonna start our site inspection right here in the lobby, just so you guys know a little bit of history. The hotel opened in April 20th of 1913. So this hotel is 108 years old. It was built in a Parisian houseman architecture and it's right next to the Théâtre de Champs-Élysées. So it opened the same day as this theater. And because of that, a lot of people uh, from the theater world, directors, producers, actors, and theater goers, goers would come to the hotel right after any kind of a show and have dinner, have cocktails, etc. Only seven years after its original opening, so in 1920, the hotel doubled its size. Uh, we added apartments and we also added salons for social affairs. In 2013, the hotel closed to celebrate 100 years uh, and we bought three small buildings. We did a complete restoration and it is the way that it looks uh, just now. So as we walk through the property, we're gonna start with the restaurant at Alain Ducasse. We have a wonderful relationship with Alain Ducasse. We have him in our restaurants at the Plaza Athene, at Lemery's, as well as the Dorchester in London. Uh, this is the only three Michelin star in the world that does not serve any meat. Uh, which I think it's fascinating. It's all vegetables, fruits, uh, seafood, shellfish, etc. but no meat and still with that three Michelin stars. Of the restaurant we have La Coeur Jardin which is our courtyard during the spring and summer we have a beautiful Mediterranean restaurant but then in the winter we switch things around a little bit and we have an ice skating ring which of course does come together with a little uh, ski chalet where we serve uh, cider, hot chocolate, and you can buy pastries that you can take home with you. I wanted to add this beautiful picture because it's a great setup of a program that we had um, that privatized the courtyard and set up this alfresco dining. As we go back into the hotel, this is La Galerie. Uh, I call it the catwalk because as you see, it's a very long corridor and everybody comes and goes through here. And my favorite thing to do is just to sit down with a glass of wine or a glass of champagne and people watch. And as you're also overlooking the courtyard, it's just a beautiful, beautiful setting. Um, as we walk into, as we go into our site inspection to the rooms, you can see that this hotel, this decor, it truly screams Paris. You really feel that you're in Paris in an apartment, um, you know, in somebody's house, somebody's very nice house, of course. Uh, but this is not just any hotel. This truly uh, inspires and, and, and transmits, translates what Paris and France is. With our restoration of 2013, we bought, as I mentioned, three small buildings uh, and we built meeting space and a few suites that were decorated in Art Deco style. So very different, uh, but still very elegant, very comfortable and truly, I mean, the suites uh, feel like would be somebody's apartment. Uh, this is our meeting space. And just to give you an idea of the ideal group size, anywhere between 30 to 50, um, uh, double rooms uh, for like perhaps couples that would be ideal or even up to 70 singles just because our meeting space this is the biggest room we have and we can accommodate about 120 guests. As we continue with our tour um, my favorite part of the hotel of course the spa this is a Dior Institute 
And there are only three Dior institutes in the world, one of them being in Europe, and it's here at the Plaza Fene. And I will be telling you a little bit more of um, stories of the Plaza Fene and Christian Dior and Maison Dior. We have an incredible relationship. We're very, very close. Um, so I will be touching a little bit more on that. Of the spa, you go through a secret door and you come to this beautiful space. This is La Cave. It's our uh, wine cellar. And we're going to have a little champagne tasting before we head over to dinner. But I thought that since we're all dressed up so beautifully and we're such a good looking group, we should just take a picture before we head out. As we go in the lobby, who do we have here? One of my favorite people, one of my favorite scenes of a great movie. This is Something's Gotta Give with Jack Nicholson. He steps out of the hotel and he goes, showtime. And it is such a great line. And I wanted to show this to you because a little bit of mood, movie magic, as you can see, it looks like the Eiffel Towers on the left hand side of the hotel. But in reality, as you come out of the hotel, uh, this is an actual picture of me. So when you come out of the hotel, the Eiffel Tower is not on the left, it's on the right hand side. And as we're going to walk down that street, we are, uh, which is Avenue Montmartre, uh, Montaigne, sorry, uh, we're going to um, meet uh, the Seine River. We're going to walk to the Eiffel Tower, which is very close. And from here, I have a great surprise for you. You're going to be delighted to know that tonight we're dining at Ducasse sur Seine. So as I mentioned, we have a great relationship with Alain Ducasse. This is his latest creation. Uh, he's the chef that has the most Michelin stars in the world. He's got 20 at this time. And he created this incredible yacht. Um, this is a dining yacht. It's all around, it's on uh, the top. It's mostly made of glass so that everybody sitting at a table can actually admire the beautiful views. Uh, there's one sitting that leaves at sunset so you can see the river and the monuments, uh, but it is absolutely beautiful. It's breathtaking and something really cool. It's the only yacht that it's 100% electric. And this is important because there is no vibration whatsoever when you are on the yacht. And also, uh, there is no smells, no smoke, etc. Uh, this is a picture that we took uh, as we were having a glass of champagne from the top of the yacht. And of course, we're so, so excited because we're having a meal uh, here. I think this has been a great day. Uh, we should probably head to the bar. You're going to, you, you always see a trend with our fam trips, right? There's, we always end up at the bar somehow, but especially it's fashion week. It's the plaza. The bar at the plaza is to place to be and be seen. So let's head over there. I love the fact that our girls, Whitney, Carol and Kelly got our bags. They went ahead and reserved a place. And of course they are dressed to dazzle and make sure that you know they fit in, they fit right in during fashion week. Speaking of fashion week, we have to say hi to Joanna because she made sure that everybody has a really nice pajama in their room so that we can go to bed in style. So good night, everybody. I'm gonna see you tomorrow at breakfast. Bonjour. So we are here at breakfast. And yes, when you have a program or when you're staying at Leisure, uh, there's at Leisure, this is the breakfast room for your attendees, which is pretty spectacular. Uh, so we have, of course, the most decadent anything that you can order. I wanted to show you this picture because this is our version of the bread basket. Uh, of course, it comes in a silver platter and it even comes with a little guide so that you can see and know what every one of these uh, pastries is. And speaking of pastry, we're very proud of the fact that Jessica Prealpato was voted best pastry chef in the world in 2020. So there she is. They're making us all very proud. All right, we're wrapping this up. Let's go brush our teeth, uh, and I'm gonna meet you in the lobby so that today we are going to start our first activity. Today, ladies and gentlemen, is all about fashion. And I have a fantastic surprise for you. We're going to go and see the Dior exhibition, uh, Dior Designer of Dreams. This was an exhibit that took place in 2017. You can Google it, you can go online and you can see the making of, and I highly recommend that you watch it. This is hands down the best exhibition I have seen in my life 
anywhere in the world. It was incredible. Uh, Christian Dior died very young at the age of 52 years old in 1957, but he was so prolific. And what is really fascinating and incredible is that he dressed women from head to toe. As you can see here, from the shoes to the dresses, to the gowns, to coats, to jackets, to headpieces, to perfume, to jewelry, everything. I mean, gloves, you name it. He had the whole thing, um, you know, and it was such uh, artistry. Uh, this, this exhibit was absolutely breathtaking and, and definitely I encourage you to take a look at it. Once we stop daydreaming, we're gonna head to Le, Le Trocadero for lunch. This is a great restaurant, it's Café de l'Homme and it's housed in the Musée de l'Homme, which is the anthropology museum. It has private areas uh, or you could do a full buyout. Um, it's a great restaurant, the food is fantastic, but these are the views. So this is a terrace where we're gonna be having lunch, of course, uh, with the views of the Eiffel Tower. And before we head back to the hotel, uh, of course, you know, we're playing tourists, so we're gonna have this great picture of all of us, of our group. As we come back to the hotel, I want you to look at the facade from the other side of the street, um, because a lot of people always comment, you know, we have this, the, the plaza red, that's our, our color, this beautiful red, and a lot of people always comment on the geraniums, but the geraniums um, are, truly the, the result of a love story between Marlene Dietrich and Jean Gabin, who used to be a, uh, a French um, actor. And geraniums were Marlene Dietrich's uh, favorite flowers, and they used to always stay at the hotel. They ended up buying an apartment across from the hotel. And um, Jean Gabin uh, managed with the general manager of the hotel overnight to put geraniums in the facade so that when the next day she would open the doors of her balcony, she had the view of the geraniums in the facade of the Plaza Athene. Uh, the geraniums usually go up around April or May until around October based on the weather because of course you know that geraniums are you know um, don't live throughout the winter sadly but that's where the story comes from which I think is fantastic. This afternoon, we have a really cool activity. I told you it was all about fashion. We have brought in this artisan and she's going to teach us how to make hats. So we're all going to go home with a fabulous hat. Um, I'm going to, after this activity, um, go and change, just take a shower and meet me in the haute couture suite. Uh, just go to the lobby and somebody will score you. Everything this evening is going to be about fashion and art deco. Well, I'm really glad that you found me, that you found the suite, even during fashion, you know, during fashion week, even our doors get a little something. And as you step into um, the Haute Couture suite, you will notice uh, that, um, first of all, this incredible view, this is not a painting or a picture, this is a window. And the view was so gorgeous that we had to frame it. As you walk around this gorgeous suite, you might notice that it looks familiar uh, because this is the suite where uh, the actress, the American actress Brooke, uh, stayed on episode seven of Emily in Paris. Um, if um, somebody has not seen Emily in Paris, uh, it is so fun, it is so cute, and episode seven is all about the Plaza Athene. So uh, you will recognize a lot of the different areas that you're seeing. We have set up our suite as a glam suite. So as we're having some champagne and some canapes, we're gonna have hair and makeup. We're also gonna have a little wardrobe where we can borrow from. But something I want to mention to you is that when we talk about fashion, it's not always about the ladies, right? What's up with the gentlemen? There is one person is in our group uh, that I truly admire because of his sense of style. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce you to Mike Gretto. This man has not met a pan, a, sorry, a pair of pink pants that he didn't love, but it's not just the pants. I mean, he is committed, he owns it. He, I mean, he is just like a supermodel to me. Even the accessories, check it out. The hat, the shoes, um, the mask, he goes for it. And just for this, Mike, I love you so, so much. You are my animal spirit. Moving on from here, we're all dressed up. We had the chance to um, go to our 
flapper accessories bar and we're all dressed up, we're taking a picture. And as we go down to the main uh, entrance of the hotel, we have these uh, vintage cars that are waiting for us to take us around the property. But I have a surprise dinner is actually at the hotel. So we have a separate entrance for Le Relais Plaza, which is uh, our um, kind of like elevated, very fantastic and beautiful brasserie. Uh, it opened in 1936 and in the decor, uh, the, uh, the art decor style, which was groundbreaking at the time. Uh, it was, um, it was inspired on the first class dining uh, hall of the SS Normandy, which was one of the uh, most famous ocean liners of the time. And you can see that it feels a little bit maritime. So um, looking at this bar, I have a really cool story to tell you about the bar. I was telling you about Christian Dior earlier. Well, in 1946, Christian Dior opened his boutique or his atelier at the time in front of the hotel. And he was targeting the guests of the plaza because obviously those were ladies uh, who launched and that went for tea. So he had an arrangement with the general manager of the hotel where his models could go around. Uh, they could come, you know, here in the bar, they would have a little bit something to eat, a little bit something to drink. This is where snacking was first invented, right? Uh, but they would walk around and the ladies would say, oh my goodness, I love that outfit. Uh, who made it? And they would say, well, Monsieur Dior, his atelier is across the street. Would you like to come and take a look? Absolute genius. This was in 1946. I mean, incredible marketing visionary. Uh, so we have these great uh, photos throughout the hotel. Uh, we had photo shoots that took place. We had um, fashion shows that took place in the hotels. They would take a hallway and line chairs. And even Monsieur Dior himself was the one that was... Uh, putting all the little details into each outfit. So as we go into Le Relais Plaza and uh, sit at our table that we have reserved, you can see, you can feel that maritime style. And this is kind of like an elevated brasserie cuisine. Uh, there's all kinds of fabulous options. My favorite, if I come here, I'm gonna have a steak tartare because it's the best one in the universe in my view. Uh, of course, we'll have a little bit of dessert and everybody's going to bed, um, even um, Emily and the very handsome chef, uh, but not together. Uh, as I know, you guys know I'm a sucker for a good bath. So I am going to enjoy my beautiful bathtub. I'm gonna relax and look how incredible our friends at the Plaza Athene, they knew that today is all about fashion. So our pastry team has uh, made out of chocolate this incredible little bag um, that we can maybe just nibble on as we're taking our bath. Good morning, everybody. I hope that you had a wonderful evening. We are going to have uh, breakfast today is at leisure. I am going to choose to have it uh, via room service with my buddy, Joanna. Uh, we are just, you know, kind of enjoying the view, getting ready for the day. And as we look to the right, who's there? Oh my God, Carrie again. She's looking out for us. And I think that she just wants to join us for a cup of coffee. All right, we'll let her come. So I'm meeting you guys in the lobby and make sure that you are all packed and ready to go because we're sending the luggage to Lemaris. Tonight we're gonna sleep at Lemaris. So uh, make sure that all of that's ready as we step out for our activity and as we are, oh, what's going on? Oh, oh my goodness. Miranda Priestley does not look very pleased with poor Andy. So I am, I'm not sure what's happening there, but um, of course, this is a bit of a, of a joke. This is uh, from The Devil Wears Prada, which was also um, uh, recorded and filmed here at the Plaza Athene. But this is a great activity and this is no joke. We are going to go on the ultimate Emily in Paris tour and we're gonna do it in a Ducheve. And a Ducheve, uh, Ducheve means two horses because uh, it's a two horsepower car. So you might be asked to get out of the car and push it at some point. I'm not sure, I don't make any promises. No, I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> they walk great, but they're really fun. And it's a great way to go around. So we're going to make some stops uh, where Emily also um, stopped, starting with uh, Pont Alexander III. It is beautiful. It's probably one of the most photographed um, bridges in, in Paris. Uh, it's a great example of a Belle Epoque. It has this beautiful uh, 32 candelabra and four statues that represent French history. As we go on in our tour, of course, we have to stop at Place uh, de l'Estrapade. This is where Emily lives on the fifth arrondissement. And it's very quaint, as you can see. And you can go to the Boulangerie Moderne, which is where Emily buys her croissants and her pan of chocolat after her little joggings. Uh, we are unmissable with our little cars. It's just so cute. I had to take a picture for you. And as we continue, we're going to go to uh, the Jardin du Palais Royal. This is very close to the Louvre Museum. And to me, it's, it's very interesting because it's almost a secret. Every time that I go there, it's mainly Parisians that are just either having a cigarette or just enjoying the outdoors. There's not a lot of tourists. And um, I'm not sure why, but I kind of love it, I have to say. As we continue, uh, must stop is the opera, is uh, Palais Garnier. Uh, it is uh, absolutely uh, a fantastic example of the neo-baroque uh, architecture. Uh, you can take a tour during the day, or you can, of course, enjoy a performance of opera or ballet in the evenings. Uh, I, I highly suggest that you incorporate this in any of your programs in Paris. And then uh, we're going to also have one last stop at L'Atelier de Lumière. Uh, this is situated in a former foundry from 1835, and it's now an immersive digital art center. And uh, it really allows you to see some of the artworks of your favorite artists in a very different way. And you can rent this out for a private event if you wish. Um, so finally, I'm sure that you guys are famished after all this, you know, this marathon that we did. We're going to go to Montmartre and uh, we're going to go to the Rue de la Frébois. Uh, it is said that it's one of the prettiest streets in Paris. Obviously, it's very Instagrammable and very, very cute. Uh, we're going to have lunch at La Maison Rose, uh, where pe uh, people like Picasso and Edith Piaf have dined in the past. Um, as we go back to the hotel, we are just going to now head over to Le Maris. Uh, and as we arrive, uh, we're going to take the Rue de Rivoli, just to give you an idea of the location. Uh, we are on the first arrondissement. If you walk out the door of Le Maris and make a left and walk for about one and a half minutes, you will be on the pyramid of the Louvre Museum. So an absolutely incredible location. As the plaza is the hotel of fashion, Le Maris is the hotel of the arts. Uh, we are now in the Tuileries Garden, Gardens and we're facing uh, Le Maris here. This is the building on the right hand side. As our doormen are, welcome us, are wel welcoming us into the lobby, there is also another very important person that wants to say goodbye to you. So, hello to you, sorry. This is Franca Holtman, our general manager. And I love the fact that in Paris, both our general managers are women. I mean, I, it's just something that I personally think it's, it's wonderful. As we've been running around a lot, um, um, you can go to, the, to our suites. Uh, we can relax just a little bit, perhaps have a little bit of that delicious cake and champagne that the team has uh, set up for us at Retreats Resources. Uh, but I think that we need a little bit of a break. So I am going to uh, walk you down to the Balmont Spa. I'm very excited to show this to you. This is brand new. So we had the Balmont Spa for a number of years, but this is now uh, an entrance that we have straight from the street level. And from this boutique, you can go downstairs and head over to the spa. So everybody's gonna have a massage or a facial. We're gonna relax and I'm gonna meet you at six o'clock in the lobby. We're gonna do a site inspection and a dine around in the hotel. So ladies, you can wear your estilettos. We don't have to walk too far. We're gonna stay in the hotel and no, uh, no coats required. Hello, everybody. I hope that you had a wonderful spa appointment. Uh, we're here in the lobby, and what can I say? Um, this hotel is so special. 
because of so many different things. It opened originally in 1835. So yes, this hotel is 186 years old. 186 years old. The original owner, Charles Auguste Meris, uh, created this hotel because he wanted to appeal especially to the British people that were traveling in Paris. And at the time, most people would stay at friends' houses or apartments, uh, but not necessarily a hotel. So he wanted, he opened this establishment as a hotel thinking that he wanted to have those guests stay with, with us. It has been called and it is known as the Hotel de Roi, uh, the Hotel of King, the Hotel of Kings, due to the many royal guests that we have had through our history. In 1889, this was the first hotel that had a telephone. And in 1907, it was the first hotel in Paris to have a private bathroom in every room and every suite. It's pretty interesting, huh? In 2007, we started our uh, collaboration with Philip Stark. This is one of the first hotels that he started working with. And you can see how interesting it is. You have a building, you know, that it's almost 190 years old, but then you have a piece of art in the ceiling, uh, in the ceiling of the reception. And you can see this mix of brand, uh, of, of new and old and modern and classic. And he was inspired by Salvador um, artistry when he uh, did this restoration. So we're gonna head over in our site inspection. We're going to go to this very special place. This uh, is La Patisserie du, uh, uh, du Maris par Cédric Grolet. So Cédric Grolet was named, was our pastry chef for many years. Um, and he was voted best pastry chef in the world in 2018. And he became so famous that we had to open a pastry boutique for him. So this is the pastry boutique. He became really, really famous because of this. This is what kind of like really uh, uh, made him very famous. And when I first went to the hotel, they put this on my plate and I was like, okay, it's a lemon, right? And I thought it was a real lemon. Well, this is a cake. Those two things, that lime and that lemon are cakes. And you can see better in this picture where you see the apples and that one that it's a little bit cut uh, and you see the cake. And also his other great creation is the um, reinvention of a Rubik's uh, cube, which is fabulous. This is Cedric, he is a rock star. He is not at the hotel today, but he wanted to know how excited he was uh, for retreats resources to, to be. So he created this lovely sugar confection just for you, Carol. As we move on uh, through uh, the hotel, this is La Galerie Pompadour, and that's going to lead to our meeting space. Uh, what, I mean, what can I say about this meeting space? Hashtag casual, right? Um, these are original uh, uh, floors. Uh, it's uh, absolutely stunning. All you have to do if you have an event literally is perhaps lead the candles. But I wanted to show you a couple of really cool events that we had. This one in particular, there were uh, opera vignettes in between uh, the courses. And in this one, we had uh, these little ballerinas to do a little performance. So as we move into the rooms, I'm very, very excited to show this to you because this is all brand new. Uh, we work very hard, even though we had to close our hotels for six months. Um, this year, we worked very hard and we took advantage of the time to do renovations and restorations and a lot of work and you can see uh, the new color schemes of our rooms and suites. Um, I am absolutely in love with this wallpaper. This is hand painted wallpaper. I don't know if you guys knew that such a thing exists. It does exist and I want it in my house. I'm just putting this out to the universe. As we move on uh, to some of our suites, again, you just have an example, and this truly is same as the Plaza Athena, it screams Paris. Uh, it's just so cozy and so homey, and you just wanna, you just wanna leave here. I wanna move here, you know, that's that's my goal in life. I wanna move here. <laughs> so we keep exploring some other suites. I thought that this would be a great place to start with our dine around. So we're gonna have some canapes and some champagne as we admire the beautiful views of the gardens. Uh, and we can have also, you know, Joanna will tell us some stories of all the incredible um, 
history of the hotel. For example, Salvador Dali, he lived in the hotel on and off for 30 years. He did used to run that motorcycle through the, through, um, the hotel, I have no idea how uh, one, one day one of the housekeepers almost had a heart attack because he had either, I don't know, it was a puma or like a baby lion or something that should not be on a leash, definitely should be on a cage. So he, it was his pet at the time. As we move on with our diner run, we are now going to uh, go to um, downstairs to our chef's table so we can see all the hustle and bustle of the kitchen while we experience some of the latest creations of our chefs. I am always fascinated with uh, whatever they come up with. Um, and you know, even just the presentation is just so different and unique and just a great space where we can have um, a, nice, a nice meal. After our appetizers, we're going to move on to Le Dali. So Le Dali is our um, heart of the, of the house, really. Uh, this is the heart of the hotel. Everybody comes and goes through here. It's our three-meal restaurant. In between, you can have a glass of wine. You can have afternoon tea, anything that you want. And it was also inspired by Dali, of course, and named after one of our most famous um, guests. Uh, this is uh, kind of elevated market cuisine, whatever is fresh, whenever, whatever is in season, that's what our chefs um, will present to us. And once we're finished with our dinner, with our entree, we're just going to head uh, to the elevators and I'm going to introduce you to the piece de resistance, La Belle Etoile Suite. Uh, La Belle Etoile is one of our, if not our most famous suites at the hotel. It was just completely restored uh, last year. It's absolutely divine. This bathroom has 360 degree views of Paris along with uh, the terrace. But uh, truly what this suite is very famous for is this. No other suite in Paris has this outdoor space. Uh, what you see there on the left is the Louvre Museum. What you see across uh, from the Tuileries Gardens is uh, La Gare d'Orsay, the Orsay Museum, which is an Impressionist museum, which you should not miss if you like Impressionist art. As we admire and we enjoy the sunset, Joanna and our team have set up a table for us so that we can enjoy some of the wonderful creations of Cedric. And if that terrace looked familiar to you, it's perhaps because you have seen it in this wonderful movie called Midnight in Paris by Woody Allen. And if you haven't seen this movie, highly recommended, not just the movie, but the soundtrack is fabulous. We're gonna head down as we always do to the bar uh, to have a nightcap. Maybe you have prepared the Meris Millennium, which I sent you the recipe uh, earlier, actually Karen and Whitney did with the, with the invite. And our friend Cara, you know, Cara Cartier, I don't know if she was able to join us, but she said that she had a friend in town and if he could join us for a drink. So I said, yes, of course. So here's Cara and her friend. So everybody meet uh, Cara's friend, Cara's friend meet everybody. She's got some really nice friends, Kara, doesn't she? As we go back to our suite, um, our team has um, set up a little something for us so that we can take home a little pistache, which is uh, the mascot of the hotel, along with one of the beautiful candles uh, with the scent of lemuries, which is um, grass. Um, so good night, everybody. I'm going to see you tomorrow. We're going to have breakfast at Alain Ducasse. Good morning. I hope that you had a wonderful rest. We have a busy day today. Uh, I always like to arrive early for breakfast, enjoy my cup of coffee and just kind of like, you know, go through the day and just get my mind um, just set for the rest of the day. Because today is Saturday, lucky us, this is the brunch menu. So not only every day is a fabulous menu, but we also have menu. And I know that some of you miss your, your family, especially maybe Carol and Whitney, you guys travel every single week with us. So we thought that perhaps you wanted to see your girls in your cappuccino uh, and you won't miss them too much. Um, after, um, after breakfast, we're meeting in the lobby and I have a very special surprise for you. We're heading to Versailles. I could talk about Versailles probably for three weeks straight, but we don't have the time. So very quickly, Versailles started originally as a hunting pavilion for Louis XIII. And what you see here kind of like in the middle, that tiny, like small little space, that was the original 
hunting pavilion. His son, Louis XIV, decided that he wanted to move to the countryside, that he didn't want to live in Paris, and he wanted to install the court and the government in Versailles. So he did so in 1682, and for the next hundred years, a succession of kings kept embellishing and adding to the chateau until the French Revolution in 1789. For, so for a little over a hundred years, the court and government was here in Versailles. At the height of, um, of that time when everybody and the government was based there, over 10,000 people lived and worked in Versailles, which is unbelievable. So of course, with the French Revolution, Louis XVI was forced to, to leave Versailles. We all know how that ended up for him and his family, not so well. Uh, but you know, since then, Versailles was never a residence. In 1837, became a museum of uh, history of France, and then has always stayed as a museum. Um, one of my favorite things, and you know, when you travel with me, is when somebody says, "Madame Candel, come with me." because that means that some secret door will be open or some rope will be, you know, just open. And that means that we have access to places where other people don't have access. So this is what's happening right now. We have our beautiful tour guide that is giving us a private tour of the some of the apartments where there are no other guests, there's nobody else, and we can enjoy and experience um, the art and the history that our tour will share with us. After visiting the apartments, we're going to go to the gardens and it's such a beautiful, that's a whole nother thing. It's such a beautiful um, and incredible space. There's one great movie, if you have never seen it, it's called A Little Chaos. Uh, it's fascinating and I highly recommend it. It's really, really nice, very unexpected. It wasn't famous, it's with Kate Winslet, uh, but it's a great, great little movie about the, um, Versailles, and I will send this to you on a follow-up on email, so don't worry. As this is such a great day, I thought that we should have a picnic, perhaps, and walk and enjoy the gardens. Um, so we're going to do this, and whenever we're ready, we're going to head back to Paris, with the first stop being um, something really special. We're going to go to Le Chocolat, and this is the chocolate factory of Alain Ducasse. So the man is not happy with 20 Michelin stars, and I think that he even has like a a uh, place with a roast coffee for him. He has his own chocolate factory. So we're gonna visit this because I mean, who doesn't love um, chocolate? And after that, I know ladies, you've been begging me. So yes, we are going to do our favorite sport, Le Chopin. I'm gonna give you some time, do whatever you want, go shopping, and I'm going to meet you at six o'clock in the lobby and we're gonna go out for dinner. Dress very casually. Tonight's dinner is in a great restaurant. Uh, very, very casual, very traditional. It's called Olione, and it is of a tradition. Is a traditional uh, bistro of Lyon, which is a city in the south of France. Um, so I know that it's been a long four days. I've been um, dragging you all over Paris. Uh, hopefully you have enjoyed that. And I think that we um, have to end the day and our trip as we always do at the bar, perhaps with a glass of champagne or two. I know we've been drinking a lot of champagne and sometimes we need something different. Carol, Whitney, I've got you covered. Don't you worry. I know you love your coconut drinks. Uh, so you know, we deliver, you ask, we deliver. So we have those ready for you. And as we go back to our rooms uh, for our fi final sleep at Lemery's, how nice, Joanna was so kind. She actually picked up some chocolates for all of us so that we can take home. Following day is departure, so you are more than welcome to have room service if you want. I will be at Ledali having a little bit of coffee because I want to say goodbye to all of you. And I know what you're thinking. You're looking at these pastries and you're like, but I want more. But physically, we cannot eat more. Fear not. We have the perfect, most stylish doggy bag in the history of doggy bags. So our team has put together these wonderful treats for you. Look at our friend, Jennifer Squillas. She's all stylish with her doggy bag, ready to go and head home. And I have to say, I know I speak on behalf of my colleagues, myself and my uh, Parisian family. Uh, my teams are in my teams or my colleagues, they are my family. Uh, we can't wait to welcome you guys back when you are ready. 
will be waiting. Uh, but until that moment, you know that we'll always have Paris. Merci beaucoup. And that was moi. Wow. And now you know why Nuria is the queen of the real time retreats episodes series. Wow. Absolutely, Thank without a doubt. Unbelievable, Nuria. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I was almost crying. I was smiling so hard. I, oh, hold on. I was going to say, I'm like, I can see myself. <laughs> I do think that Whitney and I are going to have to have some other kinds of drinks together so that we can get those coconut drinks out of your library. <laughs> I have, I have, I've used those on every one of my presentations. <laughs> yes. This was tough. I'm like, how do I incorporate this? <laughs> coconut drink and Whitney and Carol in their island beach cover up thing. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll send you, you a new one. one. We'll send you a new one. Yeah, we will. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Truly. Go ahead, Whit. So I hope that everybody had a, a, a good time and that you guys enjoyed. And I don't know if you have any questions for us. Uh, sorry, I went a little bit over with time, but you know, just get, there was a lot. It was <laughs> a lot and we still awesome. have- Awesome, thank you. We still have 34 people with us. So that was, au revoir. don't go. Yeah, it was wonderful. And, and you know, all the comments are just stunning. I can't wait to get back. I wanna take Nuria with me. Uh, you know, you, you add, you bring so much to your presentation. It's, it, it is truly like being there. It's not just like we have 30 rooms and we have 12,000 square feet of ballroom. It's like, no, we're going to go in the back door and here's a little chocolate. And now we're going to, it's just fantastic. So I, I don't know if anyone has any questions, um, but at this point, if you do, just go ahead and unmute yourself and ask Nuria directly. All right. Hi, well, Maria. Hi. <laughs> I was just wondering if we would be able to get a list of all of those places that we whizzed around. Um, I My spelling is not fantastic and I, I want to be able to go back and look a little more in depth at some of them. Sure, I can, I can type it out for you, no worries, of course. Thank all you. The best recommendations would be fantastic. And I had a question about the, is it the Dior exhibit? Was it Dior? Yes, so the Dior exhibition, <laughs> If you Google, if you Google it, you just have to Google and I can put, I can add this. It's a, it's a designer of dreams and they made kind of like a documentary uh, of the making of. Okay. So it's very, very interesting. And it's just fascinating because it's, it's not the fashion, it's everything about the craftsmanship, you know, um, it, it's really, really, really um fascinating the exhibition itself is over you can't yeah the exhibition was i was blown away because it only was for six months which i could not believe that such an incredible exhibition was i don't think that they were expecting that it was going to be so successful afterwards it went to london for about six months uh but it was so incredibly popular that i think they should bring it back and have it honestly for like a few years because yes look at Josh Brown, who is that little kiddo? It's, she's my new trip. She's my new trip director. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's, That's my granddaughter. <laughs> she's so cute. Yep. That's she's fascinated watching all the pictures. She's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> she's got to go home. She's wearing a little helmet because her head's a little flat in the back. My son wore one of those too. <laughs> but it's got hearts all over it. Yeah. My God, so cute. Oh, granddaddy's kisses. All right. Um, Kelly, did you and Nuria chat about this? This is a very tough week, I think. Oh, God, yeah, I agree. Don't make me do it. <laughs> you look stunning, by the way. You look like a <laughs> so, that too. I know, right? I went all, all sorts of French. Um, thank you, Nuria, for such a great presentation. And... I, I think that this was um, one of the harder weeks uh, to judge. Um, so please bear with me everyone and don't be offended because I do have to choose just one. Um, and I thought that the story was uh, very well related and was very personal. And at the, um, at the same time was uh, such a great tie into the theme. I thought that Lori with her Barbie uh, was 
the over the top, amazing all in this week. And I love what she compiled behind her and all of the different pieces that went into that. I thought it was very, very thoughtful and um, evoking. So Lori, congratulations. You win your you. choice of Maui Gym sunglasses. I'll send you some information on that after this. I think she should Thank win so just much. with the eye makeup alone. <laughs> Nicely done. All right. Well, thank you for the effort, Lori and everybody else. I want to remind you that we would love to honor Nuria on our Facebook page tomorrow by showing the spirit of what happened today. And that's going to require some photographs. So whether you're self-conscious about selfies or not, Josh, um, do a selfie, you know, bring your props, yes, picture of yourself. Yes. Send them to me, please, at carol at retreatsresources.com. I really want to see your beautiful faces and the kind that you grab from the screenshot aren't as effective. So please send me enough pictures so that we can applaud Nuria tomorrow publicly because she just did a marvelous job. Nuria, I think that probably most people on this call would pay any amount of money you wanted to charge to replicate the trip you did today. Um, and take us all with you. We don't care how much it costs, right gang? Just like Nuria, just put it together and we're there. All right, we might have to do that. <laughs> Doesn't even require friends and family rate. So um, in closing, I just wanna invite everyone back next week. It's going to be, I hope, a very fun week to celebrate um, Washington DC. So we are going to be hosted next week by the Watergate Hotel in downtown DC. The theme is celebrate your inner scandal. So Mad Men era, um, whatever personal scandal stories you'd like to bring, bring your Olivia Pope with you. Um, we're going to celebrate scandal next Wednesday on inauguration day hopefully live from the Watergate. Hopefully all will be calm and we will go live from the Watergate. So I hope that you will come back, bring your stories. I think we're gonna have a great time with our Mad Men era tour of the Watergate Hotel. Okay. Very fun. Yeah, it's Thank gonna be fun. Thank you everyone. Thank you, Nuria. Thank you, everyone. Once again. Thank you guys. Thank you, Thank you so much. All right, buddy.